along the Euphrates and the north of a road that connects the capital city of Iraq to Karbala, there is a city called Jorfil Saka, a city known for its palm groves and big artificial lakes. Over the past 10 years, this city has been an unconquerable citadel for the most ruthless terrorist organizations in the world. With the fall of Saddam Hussein in 2003, this area turned into one of the main strongholds of Al-Qaeda and the Ba'ath Party. It was in this area that they orchestrated a series of terrorist operations in cities and areas in South Iraq, especially Baghdad and the road that connects Baghdad to Karbala. A series of terrorist operations, all under the cloak of Islam and Jihad. هل كان أحد يردهم عن ذلك؟ هل كان أحد يقاتلهم؟ هل كان أحد يمنعهم؟ لابد نحن نحن المسلمين نحن الذين نريد أن نقيم شرع الله في هذه الأرض والله الذي لا إله إلا هو لا يقام شرع الله إلا بالسلاح إلا بالسلاح In 2007, the U.S. Army launched an operation to retake Jorfa Saka. The army failed and lost a great number of its soldiers and equipment. In the end, this embarrassing defeat prompted the U.S. to change its policies towards the enemy. Since then, the area became the safe haven for Al-Qaeda and then ISIL terrorist groups. The area is a strategic point between Baghdad, Karbala and Fallujah that could have kept the flame of conflict alight in the region and the country for years to come. An area that later on became known as the Triangle of Death. Wednesday, October 22, 2014. Three days before the Ashura operation. The army headquarters is located on the bank of the Euphrates, a few kilometers away from the city of Jorfa Saka. The forces shuttle back and forth within this area. It's two days to the Iraqi New Year and the beginning of the month of Muharram. The forces are preparing themselves for the Friday operation. المنطقة بعد سقوط النظام العراقي من 2003 لحد الآن تعتبر من المناطق الساخنة يعني بها الإرهاب بها القاعدة تنظيم القاعدة والإرهابيين الموجودين بها لكن خلال هذه الفترة بعد فتوة المرجع الكبير السيد على السيستان حفظ الله وتلبية النداء المرجعية الحمد لله والشكر كثير من المناطق تحررت وإن شاء الله خلال هذه الأيام عندنا عمليات إذا الله سبحانه وتعالى وفقنا وخلانا وإن شاء الله إحنا مصمم تصميم أنه ننهي داعش والقاعدة والإرهابيين من هذه المنطقة بصورة كاملة. أبو صادق is a high-ranking official in the Badr Corps. He tells us about the aims of the operation and the motivations behind it. For those who don't know him, he's like a person who knows nothing about war. But the fact is that he's an old veteran. His calm face 
and his forces say so. نحن جئنا اليوم من أجل تلبية أول الرجاء نداء المرجعية وثانيا للحفاظ على وطننا العزيز بلدنا العراق أرض المقد أرض الأنبياء والمقدسات. The majority of these forces are volunteers, office clerks, businessmen, workers, clerics, students, the poor and the rich. The young and the old are all members of this army. They have decided to do away with an enemy who aims to strike terror into the hearts of people through the most inhumane ways. من زوجتي بالنسبة إلى زينب من أمي بالنسبة إلى زينب سيد من أنا بالنسبة لعلي الأكبر عائلتي وأهلي كلها فداء في سبيل الحسين أنا أعتقد مع الإمام الحسين وفي أرض الإمام الحسين شين إحساسي إحساسي أني شاركت في يوم الطف يعني النداء سمعت وانتهى اشتركت في يوم الطف والله ما أتمنى كل, كل مدة روح للإمام الحسين أقول له أبو عبد الله شبيه يعني أريد أصير من من أصحابك أريد الشهادة والله أريد الشهادة. لبيك يا حسين. 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 Tuesday, October 23, 2014, a day before the Ashura operation. The forces get on pickups while they are happy and full of energy to leave their position towards the battlefield. The destination is one of the Iraqi army's bases near the front line. They've decided to do away with the enemy who tries to strike terror and doubt into the hearts of people. In the operation room, the commanders are explaining the plan and the mission. The battalions of ordinary people surround a region that begins from South Jorfal Sakur. Other battalions in the east of the region and on the other side of the Euphrates will block the road if the enemy turns to that side. Therefore, the enemy has no option but to go to the farthest corners in the north and pass over a bridge which connects the two sides of the Euphrates. The mission of the forces we've come along with is very difficult. They have to wait in ambush in this point known as Fazalia and prevent the enemy from fleeing to Fallujah. Outside the operation room, tents are being set up one by one. The lull here is just before the storm. Some are talking to each other, some are taking a rest, and some are sitting alone thinking about the past and the future. Friday morning, October 24, 2014, the day of the Ashura operation. At the crack of dawn, the fighters are getting ready for the operation. Launching missiles is an indication that the operation has already begun. The fighters have woken up much earlier than the sun. Their eyes do not seem tired, though they have been wide open during the night. The fighters are prepared to get themselves to the north part of the battlefield, that is to Fazalia, and block the enemy's ways to escape.
اليوم كيوم الطف كل واحد فيكم اليوم حبيب ومظاهر وعابس وجون ان شاء الله عندما تهجم للامام الامام الحسين خلفك اكو واحد هسه يعيف الامام الحسين ويدير وجهه بالمعركه لا صارت فنعاهد الامام الحسين ان شاء الله وبهذا اليوم العظيم هو يوم الجمعه يوم مبارك ان شاء الله الامام الحسين عليه السلام في صبيحه يوم عاشوراء ساحل من ناصر ينصرني صيحوا كلكم لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين لبيك يا حسين The conflict begins much sooner than the fighters thought. In the meantime, some enemy forces prevent the fighters from proceeding. The clash begins. The enemy snipers kill two of the fighters. A few more are injured. In the afternoon, the fighters liberate many parts of Farsia and Fazalia and bring under control the road that runs to the city of Fallujah, a road that is supposed to be the shelter of the enemy. They must determine their positions before sunset. Saturday, October 26, 2014, the second day of the Ashura operation. Farther away, right on the other side of the battleground, we drive on a road that runs to Jaffa Saka, a road liberated yesterday with the help of the army and the volunteer forces. Seven years ago, the US Army had proceeded up to this point but retreated from this area forever as its vehicles and military equipment were destroyed. But nothing can stand up against the will of these fighters. Neither mortar fire, nor serious setbacks, nor death snarls, nor ruthless snipers who have their foreheads in the crosshairs, nor the enemy that wants to strike terror into their hearts. The paper tiger is ripped to shreds in the early hours of the operation and the fighters enter the city victoriously. On the other side of the battlefield, 
the fighters are still waiting. هذه المنطقة منطقة جرف الصخر وشمالها نحن الآن شمال منطقة جرف الصخر بحدود 20 كيلومتر منطقة الفاضلية هذه المنطقة متصلة بمحافظة الأنبار من خلال عمرية الفلوجة هذا الطريق يؤدي إلى عمرية الفلوجة قطع المنطقة قطع الاتصال بين هذه المحاف بين محافظة الأنبار وعمرية الفلوجة وبين جرف الصخر اللي هي الطريق المؤدي إلى كل من محافظة بغداد ومحافظة بابل ومحافظة كربلاء وحتى النجف الأشرف جرف الصخر منطقة هذه قديمة صار لها حوالي عشر سنوات تهدد كل كربلاء تهدد كربلاء وتمنع الزوار هنا قتل آلاف الزوار على الطريق يجوز عشرة آلاف زائر عشرين ألف زائر ما أدري اختصبت كثير من النساء هنا منطقة إرهاب لمدة عشر سنوات كاملة بيد الإرهابيين أنا الآن جاي ننظفها حققنا مكاسب بها إن شاء الله حققنا أهداف ونطهرها كامل إن شاء الله خلال يومين يا أخويا أنا يا أخويا بارك يا أخويا عاشيني يا أخويا يا أخويا لا تحرك من يطلع لي بعد أبدكشن Rape and death. Words that have been resonating through this region over the past 10 years. The mainstream media, however, turn a blind eye to all these inhumane crimes. The enemy broke many hearts, and the nation is bloody, but still unbowed. فهذه جرف الصخر تعتبر منطقة استراتيجية وعقدة مواصلات أهالي جرف الصخر من أيام النظام السابق بالتسعينات هم كانوا من قادة القاعدة كانت المنطقة تدين إلى القاعدة وقيادات القاعدة زرقاوي وغيره ترقوا وعملوا في بداية عملهم في هذه المنطقة ولذلك تختلف عن كل مناطق العراق الأخرى بكون هي أصل القاعدة في هذه المنطقة قبل تغيير النظام من أيام صدام من أيام صدام أمريكا يزعمون كي يجوا حضور دشان إما تغيروا لا لا ما كانوا مطهرية كل من المنطقة ما كانت ممسوفة كلها يعني بيد الإرهابيين جزء من عدها بعدين توسعوا الإرهابيين في هذه المنطقة أمريكا ما كانوا يعني يحسون أن هذه منطقة بالنسبة لهم مهمة تخص الناس وتخص الزوار فما كانوا مهتمين بها Once more, we move from the farthest northern parts of the battlefield to the farthest southern parts to witness the inch-by-inch inch cleaning of Jorful Sakur. Now, the paper tigers who wanted to strike the people with horror have been ripped to shreds. The lesson ISIL learns from Jorful Saka is not a pleasant one. Despite their different cultures and backgrounds, when the Iraqi people unite, they can root out enemies of any kind.
the fighters who have successfully cleaned the city of ISIL terrorists join together and mark the victory with songs and smiles. Sunday, October 26, 2014, the third day of the Ashura operation. On the last day, Jofor Saka and its surrounding areas were completely liberated and cleaned. Terrorist groups, pushed back to the northern parts of the battlefield, are now surrounded from all sides. The army, armed to the teeth, has come here to fulfill the aims of the operation in this region, that is, Fazalia. As we reach Fazalia, the army, with the help of volunteer fighters, has already begun the cleaning of the palm groves in the suburbs of the city. Before sunset, the groves and reed beds that can be good hideouts for the retreating enemy must be cleaned. For the Iraqi fighters, the Iranian faces of our team were quite familiar, and they used every opportunity to express their familiarity. اي والله بحق محمد وال بيت محمد وهذا الحيل اللي بينا كله من فاطمة الزهراء عليها أفضل الصلاة والسلام نشكر الجمهورية الإيرانية الإسلامية وعلى رأسها السيد الخامنئي لماذا؟ لأن عدنا دعم وعدنا أخواننا ويانا مقاتلين شداء أبطال وعدنا عزيمة من عزيمتهم عزيمة عزيمتنا من عزيمتهم وهم ويانا سب الساتة نسأل الله أن يحفظهم ويحفظ الشعب الايراني جميعا. طلعنا جوا محاناهم ما حل ان شاء الله. خلصوا ان شاء الله وشردوا هالجريبيه هذول. Behind one of the bulwarks, we were talking to the volunteers when the enemy began shelling. The fighting started again. A few mortar shells that dropped all around us killed and injured a few fighters. One of our cameras also broke in this attack. In the end, with the help of Iraqi young fighters, the strategic region of Jofor Saka was liberated. Abu Hassan is monitoring the latest news to send the news of the victory to the headquarters. سيد داغر وأعلامها بهذه البيوت الصفراء ترفرف أمامنا إن شاء الله من نصر إلى نصر ولن يهدأ لنا بال حتى تحرير كل الأرض العراقية من 
من داعش ومن بقايا داعش ان شاء الله Arba'in day, 40 days after the Ashura operation. The road from Baghdad to Karbala is now under the feet of the pilgrims who are going to the holy shrine of Imam Hussein. They've been walking on this road for centuries, in all weather conditions, in danger, in safety, in hardship, and in ease to take part in the biggest congregation of lovers in the world. Those who love human values and human virtues.